So, hello everybody, it's Rika from Finland here today, and we're doing this canvas. We're starting a bit late because of technical issues. We had a great picture, but actually no sound. So, what we're doing today is this kind of dress. Let me show it to you. Dress canvas, or reverse canvas actually. And the idea came from Virag. I'm not sure if I can pronounce your name right, because I was asking what kind of project would you like me to do in Artist Live. And of course there's some limitations, because I also keep live glasses, so I don't want to give those like teachings away. So Virag actually mentioned this uh, canvas I did for Thenabar team, for a blog hop, which had the this kind of uh, dress on it and the original idea came actually from Marta from the same team but since then I've been seeing these kinds of like uh, dress canvases popping up here and there for example Pascal does, does these two so now that I've babbled you about it let's do it so let's start for example with the base so this is just a cheap canvas from, I think it would be something on a dollar store, from a tiger. So it's actually turquoise, as you can see. It's not white, but it doesn't matter. We can change it. This was what you see, turquoise as well. But let's give it a coat of just but plain gesso first to get the coloring a bit different. So hi everybody! So glad you can join me. And sorry for starting a bit late today. Now that I'm painting I can try to watch the chat also and ask you about CHA. Have you been checking the new collections out? I mean, there's a few projects from me in this GHA in the Prima booth. And, like, even though I know, know I did the projects for the booth, it's still so unbelievable to see them actually there. But one of the things I'm, like, really ex excited about is the upcoming kind of similar... Um, event in Europe, in Germany, Frankfurt, and I'm going there. So everybody who's going to Frankfurt, to the paper world, come and meet me, please. <laughs> I would love to see you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, everybody. I did about 10 layouts for the Prima booth. Two canvases, one necklace, a an altered teapot, and I think that it's it. I would have loved to do more al altered items, but shipping was the main element for me, doing a lot of layouts and not so many altered items. But back to the, this project. So as you can see, I'm painting the edges, but also the inner edges. So we have a white coverage there too. And then we should get these edges as well. White. Of course, I could have done this before the show, because now it's just me painting. But the project is relatively quick anyway. So, well, there's drying times. But luckily I've taken measures and done some prepping work. Not for the canvas, but for the other parts. 
Thank you, Petra. I actually like the teapot myself. <laughs> it was so much fun to do. I went to the jumble sale and it was extremely inexpensive, the teapot, and I just had to have it. And when I saw the new Thinabar metal, so it was a perfect fit with the new acrylic paints and the new metals. So now it's more or less white, and so are my fingers. And the next thing we can put straight away there. Yeah, it is just white gesso. Of course you can use white acrylic paint too, but gesso is cheaper. <laughs> and the next thing is this snowflake paste. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. It's quite new, that one also. I can just try to show it to you. So it's this um, texture kind of paste with glitter. So it's just like snow. Just like what we have outside. Right, Debbie? Actually, there should be a snowstorm coming. So. <laughs> a lot of that stuff tomorrow then. So the next thing I'm just applying the snow like paste randomly so that there's heaps of it in places and then just a teeny tiny touch in some others. And what I'm trying to do is to kind of hide the, what do I release, staples, the paper ones are staples, so I guess these are staples too. So here we go, just a bit there too, like you so. And as you can see, the bottom part ain't like this canvas anymore, but it's book page. So let's do that next, so we can add a layer on it. And I just found this, oh, it's a bit small ish. I need to add a bit of gesso on the sides. Turquoise one won't play true. Of course you can do the dress on the other side of the canvas as well. But I thought it would be fun to have kind of frame around it. Oh and by the way, I was planning to give the two canvases away. So both the one I made for the sample and both this one that I'm making now. So if you would like to have the canvas, please stay after the show. And if there's more than two people, we'll raff raffle them. But if there's like no one, so <laughs> then I'm stuck with these. And then let's add the paper. So you could use just uh, the soft gel for this part, but as I'm working with just funnily, just with one type of gel medium or one kind of adhesive, so I'm using the let me show the lid, the 3D matte gel, and because th this is heavy stuff, so I can dilute it with water. So I'm just adding some water there and transforming this into some kind of soft gel. I'm just getting it there to the bottom and then placing the book page on top. And there we have our background. Almost done. Like so. And just one more thing. It's this doily part. It is autographed. Yeah, I can autograph the canvases if you like. So it's 
this kind of using a prima die, doily die, and this is just plain printing paper, just like white printing paper, and I'm just kind of using this edge so I didn't take all the shapes out. Just that, let's add it there. And again, just taking some of the mud gel into the brush with water, painting it around, and then sticking this to the background as well. It gives sort of a halo look. And then I can go over if I want to. It's a bit warping, no. Well, the flowy dress comes off on top, so it doesn't matter. Let me just close the lid for a while. Let's get close the gesso too. Hi everybody! Thank you for joining. We're doing a dress canvas today. Let me just pick that one. And what I'm adding as the final layer for the like background is the clear crackle paste. Uh, well, it should could be a newspaper. This is an old book page, but honestly you can use any kind of paper. For example, the new Prima papers with the roses they would look wonderful if you're doing like a romantic style dress. Now I'm just adding the clear crackle paste with a brush. So if you're applying it with a palette knife and give, getting those lumpy areas or more, then <coughs> it shows bigger crackles. But what I'm doing this kind of even, just a teeny tiny layer. The crackles are a bit smaller. And as you can see, I'm trying to concentrate the bigger, like heaps of the paste, to the upper corners. Because in the end, those are almost the only places that are visible after the dress is done. So now let me move this a bit further away, for example here, to dry, and let's start the dress. Oh Janelle, that's horrible to hear that you got kicked out. That's not nice at all. So I think I even typed to the supply list a Barbie doll. And my daughter was so worried when she saw me pick this up that where's mommy going with my Barbie doll? So the next stage, if you don't have like a Barbie doll of your own, I mean planning to do that, like buy for myself so I can't can't ruin or can ruin it if I want to. But if you're using your daughter's or child's doll, then we need to something to cover it. And this is the easy solution. So I think this is called cling film. Tuorakelmo in Finnish. Uh, it's a kitchen thingy. You can rub it around the food. So, just rubbing it around the doll now. Trying to cover both of the shoulders and then the hip line. Well, let me go that one there. Stick that there. Then try to get the hair out. And I'm thinking I'm needing another piece there. Like this. So now it's all covered. 
And why I'm using a Barbie doll? Because it has these exaggerated shapes. So if you're using any kind of doll, it's good to have like visible curves or otherwise the end result will be also without curves. So the bigger the curve, the bigger the curve is in here, especially when you're using paper and not something that is easily wrapped around and the whole piece is quite small. So if you have something that is flatter, it might not look as dressy. I'm not sure if dressy is the right word, but dressy as this one. Um, what I'm using for to make the actual kind of the fabric of the dress. And again, book paper. I would recommend something a bit uh, softer than scrapbooking paper because that's quite like hard but you can use scrapbooking paper then I would recommend you putting all the little pieces of first to a bowl of water to make them really moist and then start adhering them because book paper is a bit softer so we can do that without and you don't have to use gel medium for this regular glue will do or even what's the product called you put the papers into the walls wallpapers okay my husband shakes his head even he doesn't know what is listri in english the thing you'd use to get the wallpaper up. So the idea is the same that doing piñatas or some kind of paper mache things is just to glue the paper. So first I'm again deleting and do the little well diluting <laughs> I'm guessing that's the word the gel medium and then let's add moisture to the piece of paper and just get it in there. The smaller the piece, the easier it is. What do we do with all the heads? Well, the head is staying on the Barbie doll. I mean, my daughter would be so mad at me if I would ruin her Barbie doll. This is just a mold. That's a actually good question, Jill. So I remembered to say that this is just a mold. That's why we are coloring it. So the Barbie doll stays intact. <laughs> it's goo. Goo? What is goo? So just wrapping the pieces around and of course it's easier for example to get the bust really showing if you are kind of going around with the pieces paper because paper doesn't work like like fabric and what you can do you can design the neckline and the uh, like arm lines, like twelve arms, I'm not sure what it is. So like he right here, and it's easier that way if you like follow what you're doing. But if you decide to have like this kind of really open V neck in the end you can always cut it, but only after drying. Because now it's really soft and vulnerable. As you can see, it's trying to keep its kind of original shape and popping up. But as you are adding more of the adhesive, whatever it is, and then you 
actually need to get your hands dirty and really push it so you can get it to the right shape. But now this is starting to be, be like a cooking show because miraculously dee -dee 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 -dee, we have that one already. So it's just getting the little pieces to the Barbie doll, then getting the cling film out of the back and you can peel it off if you want to. If you have a thick layer that will probably hold very well, but on the other hand you can just tuck it in here like nobody will notice and also if you're like just doing like I'm doing a bigger piece here it's also something you can use to adhere the actual dress okay there's a stupid looking piece you just get rid of that like this so we have the dress part then we need the hem part yeah magic Dee -dee -dee -dee. Now I have some is this here this is just white cardstock so we need something to actually make the hem there is a fabulous new product coming but shh, I'm not telling anything but in, since it comes then we need something to support the fabric because otherwise it will just stay flat so we're using just it can be anything really turning this into a cone style shape something maybe like this so it will go up underneath and then we need to adhere it check if I can actually stable this one because it's kind of kind of tiny now a Tim Holtz one would be really handy okay this won't work I need some tape okay I'm back It still fits. Now yeah, let's just put that a bit like that. Now, now we have a structure. Then let's bring out the background. Of course, the crackle paste will be better when it's actually dry. Now it's just <laughs> like that. He said, "Goo, goo looking." So let me think, this comes here, so the dress will come here, so we need to cut there. This is just to support the other layers here. So it can be anything. The leftover from like the backing of some paper pad or whatever. Then we are going to use some lace. This is actually as you can see and doily. So let's cut out the part. Maybe that much, like so, and 
open a piece of the resist fabric. Okay, now I'll actually put the camera on top of it. Brilliant. So let's use that part. Try to use the camera as well. Like that. I'm just crunching it to get it a bit softer because it's quite hard as it is. So let's get it a bit softer and then think about how to wrap it here. Then we have the other part coming there. I'm not ad adhering anything at this point because it's about the composition. Of course, it would be better if the gel would be like the freckle paste would be dry by now. Yeah, something like that. And then we just need the one page. So let's take that ready as well. start adhering. First of all, let's add the lace. And for the adhering part, I'm using the 3D matte gel just as it is. Not adding water this time, because now we need a good like coverage and that it really, really stays. So just look at that amount I'm putting the gel heavy handedly. Um, which paper? This is just regular cardstock, but it can be anything. And now I'm adding that one over the top, trying not to get too many fingerprints on there because as you might know gel medium actually resists color so if I get gel medium all over this resist fabric there's going to be resist fingerprints on there as well so if you're talking about the white paper it's just cardstock just white cardstock and if you're Referring to this one, it's resist fabric from Prima. Okay, now we have this and that. Now we need this, the flowy part. And we're using paper, so we need to do something to get it flowing. Otherwise, it's just as it is. So, in comes water. Of course, you could actually put this in a bowl of water just to get it moist. Okay, just a moment. I'm thinking that he's asking me something. <laughs> okay, <laughs> she was asking me about this and I because of the del uh, like del delay, I actually talked about it. So it's a resist fabric, not a pa paper, but it's actually the pattern. Let me just show you this piece. The pattern is like an old newspaper. It's called something like ads. Now we have the paper quite moist and we can start gently doing little folds on it and turning it into this kind of wavy looking dress. This is the part where you need to be a bit careful 
because if I wasn't doing this like on a show, I would actually leave the paper to dry. So it would be completely dry before I continued because moist paper, as you probably know, is really fragile. So you need to be a bit careful not to tear it or ruin it. And what you could do if you would leave it like to dry for a while, it's just put it on top of something so it molds accordingly. A bit like the top, but even just moist paper without the adhesive would do that. Hmm. I'm just that it is getting dry, like dry already, and I want a bit more shape to it because now it's just too straight. Let me try to create a fold there. Like this draping look. And I adhered this part with the gel medium and the hem part just to hide the structure underneath. Now I would need my. There it is. Let me just see if I can fit it in. Put a bit there. And then let's add the What's a great thing about gel medium or the 3D gel is that after it dries it likes gives support also. So if I add just the right amount it will go all the way from here to the bottom and give this dress support from underneath like so yes I'm thinking that's good then what we have left is the embellishing part so in comes the flowers. Let me just put that up. Maybe I should clean my hand. Maybe. So we have these. These are quite fun. The resin faced flowers. What I'm usually doing is actually <laughs> using the resin and the flower like separate so just tearing the resin face out of the balloon like this of course if you would like me to do this like a flower I'm thinking I'm going with the same composition there's the curve so this would go nicely here and this is looking a bit plain like this the flower so then I'm just folding it in half getting this really luscious layered looking flower to tuck here because again the folded flower doesn't look so much but when you tuck it in someplace you're hiding it's just the half of the flower not the total so let me get and I'm using the same stuff to adhere it so gel medium and as it is like a folded flower I'm adding just a touch the inside as well how are we doing time-wise? Yes, we are almost on schedule, I'm thinking. Then let's glue it. Whoops. Okay, now it has freckles on this face. Like that. <coughs> I 
I'm always, like you can see, sticking my hands to the paints. But if you don't want to get really colorful, <laughs> so I suggest using gloves. Then we have the stem and some leaves and as you can see this is the pink one and i'm going now for a turquoise one i'm just doing the same thing aren't i and it's a bit squished in the package looks kind of fun let's stick them there because there's a like a bigger amount of the crackle paste so it will hold those light styrofoam balls let me just think how do i put this no the other way around but not as much i'm thinking Oops, now there's snowflake paste on my hand. Yeah. If I was doing this at home, what, well, in my own time, probably it would be the same because I'm really impatient and to do everything like right now. But then I could switch up to another project and let everything dry before continuing. So, let's have that one there, a bit layering. <coughs> no, that's a bit too big to put there. Can I still? Yeah, it fits there. Let's just tuck it in. <laughs> yeah, the turquoise one matches my tablecloth. Yeah, this is actually a piece of, oh god, I don't, don't know the word, like plastic cover, <coughs> covered fabric, so it's easy to wipe. Green. Shall I add a few of the smaller roses too? Yeah, of course I have table colors for like every color, so if I'm doing like a pink project then I wear the pink tablecloth I'll put that on and <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh you know my tablecloth hmm I need to change that one Ooh. what's that one there I actually used to have a white one which was really good because that didn't like bother with any colors <laughs> But unfortunately, I left that in Norway. I was teaching my first workshop out of Finland. And that was really exciting. And only like after a week when I got home, I noticed that, hmm, I think I left the tablecloth there. But then I got this instead. The tablecloth is actually from a Finnish company called Wallila, I'm thinking. The pageants they use are huge. So there's black bits on the each side and then I just use the lightest <laughs> possible place. I want to have the little rows here as well, but will it fit? Yep. Huh. Nope. Okay, now I'm getting annoyed with myself. Okay, I'm just putting it there. I'm thinking this is not my mascot. I'm thinking this is my little rush. 
I might be wrong. Like I said, okay, now I'm done. Then, 10 minutes to go. Yes, we will make it. Even though we started a bit late. Let me just clean my hands real quick. Like that. And I had some, yeah, crystals are here. So these that I'm using are from the Garden Fable, but like anything goes. And if you don't like crystals, you don't have to add them. But a bit of bling is always nice. And again, color coordinating, so I'm using the teal and turquoise ones from, from the set in this piece. Just a tinier one. There. Almost done. Let me move those away. So as you can see from the ready sample, there's a bit of color, like just small touches. And I have these, so the mica powders, mica. And finish we would say mica, but Yeah, the crystals are fabulous. Let me just add. Yeah, the texture in here is the. Let me just show the jar just more. Okay, let's put it right way. Snowflake paste. Just really easy. Just one product. Okay, there was gesso underneath. So. You'll need that one first. But if you have white canvas, then just one. So what I'm doing now is just adding a bit of water to the mica. And then going gently with a brush. You could also use a water brush. or watercolors. Adding color here would be easier after the paste was drying. Dried. Okay, let's do it the hard way. Unless that's like a bit more bluish color. And then let's mix this one in. And as you can see, I'm just going in with my wet brush because if your brush is wet the powder will stick it and it won't ruin the powder inside the jar and wanting to turn these into a bit more like Bluish color. Just a touch more. And if there's anybody who joined a bit later when I said that I'm going to give these two canvases away, post worldwide. So if you want to have one, stay after the show. And if there's more than Two people, then we'll raffle. Again, this would be a bit easier if the glue, so the gel medium we used, or the 3D gel, would be dry by now. But hey, we can do it like this also. And also here, some touches. Ignore that. And the color will 
eventually go a bit lighter because now when I'm adding the microcolor it also like gets the paper wet and so it seems a bit darker than it's going to be so because we are not using that much mica we're just adding a teeny tiny bit And for the absorbing style, for example, this paper and the resist fabric, it's fine just like this. But as the main bodice part is done with gel medium, so it's a kind of resist, so you might want to add a fixative on top. Not that I'm thinking many of us will actually rub the ready canvases but still just, just something to adhere the mica because the finnabar mica doesn't include any other particles than just the mica the shiny shiny parts shiny min mineral So, I'm thinking I'm going it done. Letting everything dry and then see if I need to add a touch of color there or more here. But it's easier to do when these, well, <laughs> when it's dry, actually. Yeah, mica powders can be used with water. For example, you can create your own mists with these. Again, if you're using them on just paper, plain paper, no gesso underneath, or for example fabric, they will absorb into and stick better, but as they don't have, for example, Perfect Pearls has the binder in them. So if you're adding them to the water, then you're creating this kind of mixture and that will stick but these powders don't have binder on them so anything you do you need to find a way to steal the top or then be ready so it won't be as vibrant the like 50 years from now but it's mostly like mechanical rubbing or or just touching which will create the Lose some the powder. Yeah, it can be turned into a spray, or you can mix it with, for example, mud gel or anything that is clear after drying and create your own paste or own paints. You can also mix it with acrylic paint, but of course. Uh, depending on the paint, because there are more opaque ones and more translucent ones, uh, the shine will be either completely uh, ruined or like it doesn't show, or then um, it's more of a how do you would say maybe silky or like this. It's not as shiny as it is on its own, but a bit. Mm, Hmm. Well, I think <laughs> the best way is you to dry it. For example, I created a great looking red paint using red mica, but of course you can mix other colors of mica into the paint and see what it like comes like. And wait after it dries, because the shine, for example here, it doesn't shine that much because it's still wet, so the shine really shows after drying better. So that's maybe something you can dry in your art journal, for example. So, let me just wrap this up. If you have any questions, just type that in and I'm trying to answer them, or send me an email or a Facebook message or anything.
really, you don't have to hesitate to ask anything. I might not answer to my age or weight or something, but anything craft related, just send it over. And if I don't know, I'll find out. But okay, here are the two, a pink one and a blue one. And we used the crackle paste, snowflake paste, a lot of pastes, 3D matte gel, and created this dress look, dress looking canvas with bling. <laughs> so thank you everybody for coming. We are so happy that you're here. And let me just stop recording and then we can raffle or see how many of you are interested in, in the two canvases. So thank you all for joining. It was great to see you here. I hope you learned something and see you next time. I'm thinking we have Olga next Monday and yeah, I'm thinking we have Olga and we will see each other. Well, I'm moderating, I'm guessing in the meanwhile, but I'm on again in February. So ta-ta, but stay tuned if you want to be in the raffle.